It's in studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Good morning again, Rob. Billy. Great to be here. The well-rested and outdoor showered and Maria Lawrence. Clean, you might say. <laughs> good, yep. morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Squeaky clean. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, did you enjoy the outdoor show? I did. I did. I was communing. Yeah. With nature. We had. Uh, I rented a place at Lewis on the other side of Cape May. That's right. Right. Uh, for three straight summers when uh, my boys were younger, and they had an outdoor shower there too. It was pretty easy because you know you got everybody inside showering. I, I don't want to wait. I know. And there's no humidity buildup. Yeah. Other than what God gives you outside. There, there you go. Right? There you go. And you get a good view of the ships coming and going. Yep. You know, people wave to you. Yeah. <laughs> As you're in the shower, you're, you're waving back. The shower, you're waving back. <laughs> hey, how you doing? You know, it's... And there are more shipwrecks well, <laughs> <laughs> running aground. Not with me in the shower, but no, I can no, imagine no, with somebody with attractive Marie, in the with, shower, there might Marie. be a ship. Yeah, yeah. All, all ships running the ground. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. So, uh, In studio with us, uh, Bill, I, I think uh, you might be familiar with these folks here as they are from the Stubblefield Institute. Very much. And Ashley Horse, the Executive Director for Stubblefield Institute, and been here for nearly nearly three years, nearly uh, two years. Almost two years. Almost two years. Doing it feels like job. three, Bill. Yeah. It yeah. feels like That's three. right. We, we robbed Ashley from hospice, and Maria has never really forgiven us. Of course she, not. Uh, she says nice things, but internally she you see anger, not at all anger. not at all we've we've rebuilt and yes. and yeah. are in a good place yes but, they are but anyway ashley is the executive director of the institute and is doing a marvelous job also a name familiar to many folks mm -hmm. elaine bobo who is a newly appointed uh, person to the stubblefield institute or hired yeah. i guess yes. is a better word there elaine good morning yeah good morning yeah. i'm yeah. on my sixth day with the <laughs> day six day six yeah. yeah so you got it down you know where everything is <laughs> yeah i know how to get to campus and uh, get to ashley's office that's so. a good start <laughs> right how many years were you with the school system elaine 12. 12 years with Almost the school 12 system. to the day. Okay, and, and this is another new adventure for you. It is a new adventure. You know, it just was the time to Pro try something different. Yeah. Um, the title is Program Director? Program Director, and yes. What, what does that entail? Sure. Um, so I'm going to be leading the um, Listen, Learn, Engage initiative, which is kind of the student-driven side mm -hmm. of the Stubblefield Institute. So Yeah, tell me, Bill, and you chip in on this one, too, with Ashley as well, in regards to the student side of this. And uh, I know when you formed the Stubblefield Institute, getting students involved in this was key to its success. It was. Ashley's much closer, but let me bring a couple examples yeah. to it. Uh, I was asked to give a couple, of, give a few remarks last year uh, to to a group of folks involved, students involved uh, with the institute, and there's a room full, and they were energized, they were engaged. I was blown away uh, with the uh, the enthusiasm and the awareness that these students had, and they and we would not have had this. Uh, two or three or four years or so ago. So there's a lot of momentum building. And the other one, Ashley, I'm going to, uh, and I'm growing a blank on the gentleman's name. Uh, he's just received recognition, nationwide recognition for uh, uh, achievement. And when they were interviewing him, unsolicited, he gave a lot of credit to the Stubblefield Institute, to Ashley and her folks, for molding him and getting him in the position he is now. Uh, so I was, uh, uh, I've never met the gentleman, uh, but he's an impressive young man, and the fact that he's given a lot of unsolicited credit, I think, tells a lot. So that's Eli Hall, and he yeah. is one of our, he was our Civility Club president this past year, and he's currently either at Stanford or Princeton studying over the summer, and then he'll be studying abroad this summer while he quadruple majors. So, oh my and yeah. Eli was that. on with us one time. Was yeah, that he name not? is familiar. He, yeah, uh, there's right, a yeah. good possibility at okay. one point he was. I think he may have come with Cindy Powers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah. That's that's that, it. that is correct. So there was a um, man and a woman, and those names are very familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me about the process of getting students involved at the Stubblefield Institute. Ashley, was it much of a challenge at first? So really, the biggest challenge was coming out of COVID. And we had students coming back to campus who had been sitting behind a screen for almost two years. And there was still a lot of trepidation about getting involved with each other about, I mean, we, we'd been social distancing. And so we kind of joke on our side about taking pictures of events and everybody's six feet apart. Maria, you understand that yeah. from the newspaper side of things. Um, and so the very first thing we had to do was just 
get students engaged again, hence listen, learn, engage. And now students have really come to recognize what the Stubblefield Institute does and we are Excuse me, we are part of the student leadership conference that happens in the spring semester, which generally we have 120, 125 students for that. We are really excited about a certificate we launched last fall. It's the Community Leadership and Civil Advocacy Certificate. And we had 27 students who right off the bat were interested in that certificate and began that program. And we just this past spring received a Benetton Foundation grant to expand that program state to not only statewide but also to southwestern Pennsylvania because that's the kind of the jurisdiction of the Benetton Foundation. Yeah, I'm familiar with that name. They have done a lot of work around the southwestern Pennsylvania area. Yes, they have. Elaine, what's it like being on this side of the microphone? It's a little different. Yeah, yeah I'm used to scheduling people saying, right. hey, show up and see Rob. <laughs> yeah, and they usually yeah. did, too. Yeah, they did. I gave them lots of notes, which, you know, I prepared for myself today. So. <laughs> Always appreciated, too. So what do you hope to get out of this particular experience, Elaine? Well, um, I think I'll be learning along with students which mm -hmm. is really great, you know. I spent some time, I've been spending a lot of time in the last six days with people that have been involved in the, um, uh, in kind of putting together the certificate. And so while it's gonna be focusing on leadership, it'll be focusing on advocacy, um, a lot of community involvement, and of course, um, a culture of respect, creating a culture of respect. If you see me around town, I often wear a shirt that has something about kindness on it mm -hmm. because um, I believe that's where, um, all good things originate. So I'm looking forward to, um, you know, I worked a lot with high school students right. um, in a leadership academy as part of the business partnership. So um, I'm wondering if I'll see some of these same students, um, you know, on the campus down at Shepherd. So that'd be nice. Um, yeah, looking yeah. forward to the opportunity to just get to know them um, and help them grow and see how they have an impact on me personally. What they, is the next event you have coming up? what's the next program so our next event is on july 24th at 6 30 at shepherd in the bird auditorium and that is a 360 view of child care in jefferson county and that is in partnership with the jefferson county development authority that eddie benitez who is the executive director approached us because they did a study and it takes about nine months in jefferson county from the moment you identify uni child care to the moment that you actually secure child care and that's a really big challenge not only for parents but it's a challenge for employers it's a challenge for the development authority as they're trying to recruit employers into the area and so that will be a panel discussion and we have wayne clark who is the delegate for that area one of the delegates for that area we have eddie benitez from the jefferson county development authority and um Nikki Haynes, who is the director of the Children's Treehouse at the uh, at NCTC. And then we'll also have a parent joining that group, uh, probably from WV Medicine. Rob, uh, the point that Ash is making is that the Stubblefield Institute has several components. A lot of folks uh, from the outside see it from the outreach effort, the, uh, the adult uh, outreach. Uh, we also work with our legislators, both the national and the federal level, uh, excuse me, national and state level and local level. Uh, but we cannot forget that the main part, the main kernel of the institute are the students. So the, uh, the, the folks from the outside may not see the involvement with the students, but that is where I think most of our real success is, is being manifested. Now, when I remember the beginnings of the Stubblefield Institute, and I thought its initial mission was for civil and political discourse, which meant being able to discuss difficult things without calling each other idiots and stupid and crooked and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, what, what you're getting into with child care seems to be more issue and policy oriented as opposed to, I guess you could blend this into politics, but it doesn't seem like it would be straight out politics, which is what I thought the Institute's mission was in the beginning, Bill. Well, the very, very, very 
early stages uh, was that it was a training ground for practitioners. Uh, the David Avila, the David Welch, uh, how they worked. And that was the original concept. Very quickly we drifted away from that. Mm -hmm. And we did the civil discourse. Uh, and that, and everything we do in one way or the other revolves around the civil discourse. How we talk with people, how we relate to people. Even the child care issue, we try to address that and we have a problem to solve, let's solve it, uh, let's address the problem, but let's do it with kindness and respect for everyone. Uh, and that's uh, everything that we do. And we do do a lot of different things, but the civility is, is the bedrock of everything we do. So you're saying then that, that essentially the core mission has not really changed, but there's a shift, not even a shift, but... Um, you know, a refocus, if you will, on what matters to people. I'm just thinking of the child care issue. I have two friends my age who are both highly involved in the child care of their newly born grandchildren because they can't, one is from Northern Virginia, one is from Charleston, um, but they can't place those children, um, you know, not in the time frame that mom and dad need to go back to work. Um, and it's it's a problem nationwide, I think. Let so. me, Elaine and Ashley will address that more than I will, but I want to pick up on one, one word, refocus. We're not refocusing anything. We're just incorporating uh, and being as inclusive as we can be. But I think our theme, our principle, has been very consistent from day one. Yes, yeah, so oh, for, oh, go ahead. <laughs> So part of the uh, certificate program will be that the students can identify something in the community that's important to them. It might be child care, it might be health care, it might be, um, you know. Indigenous land rights. Yeah. I know might, we have a student yeah. who's interested in that. <laughs> yeah. it, it might be food insecurities. And so part of this will be, you know, examining that. What's and, important to folks. Right. What is Got important? It. How do we fix it? let's create a plan, let's present our plan. And so they have an opportunity to do that, to actually present it to people who are decision makers and can take action to help them enact what they feel um, needs to take place uh, to um, kind of correct or improve that situation. Okay. With all of our programming, we are equipping, whether it's our students or we are modeling for the public civil discourse. And so when it comes to our students and even some of our more public programming, we are giving them the tools to engage civilly. We are giving them the tools to be effective because what we're seeing in advocacy right now is there's a lot of disruptors, there's a lot of agitators, and that's not necessarily the most effective model. And you also have to take the long-term view of what those behaviors do to civil discourse. And so we're trying to bring our students back to where we can have a civil conversation about whatever they're passionate about and they can talk to their legislators and even just giving them the knowledge that our legislators are accessible. That's incredibly important. And we try to demonstrate that when we uh, have a uh, outreach effort. We've had some very contentious subjects uh, discussed that the public have been involved with uh, and it was uh, and quite informative uh, but the subjects do not change anyone's mind. That is not the intent. It's just that we lay the issues on the table and have an op have a platform that people can discuss it through, lay the pros and cons, lay their own advocacy uh, aspect to it, but done in a politically civil correct manner. Exactly. And I remember one in particular, the um, post-COVID discussion mm -hmm. um, that was at the um, Irma Bird Center, yes. where there were people um, who were highly involved in the decision-making process of um, vaccines, and um, and it was fascinating. Now, there were some people at, in the audience. At the tail end, they did hijack the meeting. You're exactly yeah. right. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes it's difficult, I think, to try and rein in, if you will, folks who just are, are just not going to be swayed right. um, and are – supposedly coming to receive information but are they really um, yeah. and and I think that's the challenge is you're gonna get people who understand 
the mission and the vision of the Institute and they're going to be right there with you but you still have people on either end that it's going to be tough to to bring them to the you know to the watering hole so to speak but but I don't think it's for, maybe I'm misunderstanding what the mission of the Stubblefield Institute is I don't think the Institute's goal is to change people's minds exactly so, right. mo- yeah. so exactly. much as it yeah. is to get the discussion going that's right mm-hmm. So if you're dug in on your point, that's fine. That's you right. might be going, and it actually might be more interesting and productive if two people are dug in and on their points and defending them well, so long as it doesn't devolve into name-calling sure, and exactly. emotional in, emotional shouting. In fact, our very first de- debate or discussion uh, was with Donna Bazell right. and the lady, Mercedes Schlapp, who was a, uh, President Trump's uh, communication director at the time. Both of them had strong, strong opinion, uh, and neither one swayed the other. That was not the intent. It was an extremely entertaining, interesting evening, but they were both polite and everything. That That's what we're looking for. Uh, uh, advocating and aside but not with intent of changing the other one's mind but doing it in a polite civil manner something that's lost in a lot of our platforms today and polite doesn't necessarily mean not passionate that's right i think that's something that people especially our students don't understand mm-hmm. or they hear the word civility and they think everybody has to be nice or you can't say anything you can yeah. be passionate yeah. You yeah. can, Bill, I've heard you tell a story about someone at one of your dinner parties standing up on the chair yeah, to yeah, make a yeah. point. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can, you can say Bill's name. You can, you can say, you, you, you Maybe can. Bill was on the chair. I don't no, know. I, not. I apparently but, was not at that <laughs> dinner party. So. But, but I'm did, sorry it, I missed it. It did happen. It did happen. But And there was a lot of passion that particular night, but no one got angry. Exactly. No one, and because no one, it never became personal. Right. It's a pretty short bridge from standing on the chair to getting angry, though. I think we <laughs> probably all admit on that one, right? Yeah. So uh, I've been, uh, just wanted to interject. I've been kind of doing a little bit of research, watching, learning, listening, and there's a lot of talk about creating a third space. So kind of that space that's not your home, it's not your work, but it's an alternate place that people can go and have conversation. Um, it's kind of compare comparable to the days when... Um, front porches were very popular and you would you know grab a bucket of beans and sit on the front porch and the neighbors would stop by and everybody you know would be busy snapping beans and next thing you know you're talking about everything that's happening in the community and so yeah. kind of creating a space yeah. to be able to have those conversations in yeah. a civic productive way mm-hmm. uh, Lane, i'm ecstatic that you've joined the institute uh for i was not involved in the process mm-hmm. i try to stay away from all aspects of that so that was ashley and her group uh but i when i was notified or they mentioned to me that you were going to be joining i was as i said thrilled you bring Thank so you. much to the table you know everybody in the community uh you've worked Work so well with so many people. How do you th- see that your school experience will directly relate to what you'll be doing with the Institute? It's really interesting how the format of this um, certificate program aligns with a very similar program that I had helped implement with the school district through the business partnership for many years. The, the monthly meetings, you know, organizing speakers, um, meeting with students as mentors. Um, So I think that um, in its own will be helpful. But like you said, just, you know, who do I know? Um, Who can I tap on the shoulder and say, hey, we've worked together before. Can you, you know, help me again? Um, So I think those connections will also be very helpful. Ashley, I want to ask uh, about the courage it takes to schedule something at Shepherd on a July 24 while the Contemporary American Theater Festival is still going on on the campus. It's, there is always something happening on Shepherd's campus. And if you don't know what's happening at Shepherd, I really encourage you to check it out. It's been an eye-opening experience in the two years that I've been there, as far as from the jazz concerts, to the theater festivals, to the research presentations, there's just always something happening. And so we are, we know that there is a solid group of people who are interested in this topic. And we think that we will have a good crowd. And if anyone wants to know more about it, they can certainly check out our website, stubblefieldinstitute.org or call us at 304-876-5005. So tomorrow night is the first of the Trump-Biden debates. And in the past, 
Shepard has had some of their students watch the debates and then have their own discussion. Uh, will you be doing anything like that this year? Uh, we will not be doing that for this particular debate. It is summertime, so our students are off doing other things right now. Mm -hmm. However, we are working on a, and I'm jokingly calling it, what we wish they would have said debate after the next debate on September 10th. And so what that is is we're um, reaching out to a lot of the D.C. schools, so Georgetown, George Washington, American, and Howard, and then Shepherd students, and we're bringing them, we're hoping to bring them together to have them debate some of the points that come up in the debate, but we're all honestly not expecting them to be well debated and well explored. Or in a civil manner. Now, with the format of that, will that be open to the public? That will be, yes. Will be, good. When you do a program, and you're going to have Delegate Clark at your next one. Correct. Are you hoping that this develops into something that can become policy in the state, that a delegate will take that information and, and try to craft legislation on behalf of it, or is that really not the goal? We certainly hope that our delegates will participate in our events. We have had events for both our delegates and our senators in which they have directly been invited to participate as either panelists or as part of small group discussion. And we aren't necessarily giving policy suggestions, but what we are hoping is that they will take a more nuanced understanding of the issue away or that they will at least have the opportunity to talk to their constituents and their constituents then have access to express their concerns, their questions. Um, one of the best examples of that is the conversation we had about the campus carry the West Virginia Self Campus Self-Defense Act. I think you had a good turnout of politicians for that one. We did. We had uh, seven of our senators and delegates join us for that. And one of, I think, the most valuable pieces of feedback I heard was from a student. He's a freshman. And a few months after that event, he had been at a table with uh, Senator Charles Trump. And he got to express his concerns, ask questions, and he said, you know, it wasn't the evil thing I thought it was. He got to hear Senator Trump's rationale behind supporting that act. And it didn't change his mind on the bill. He still is not supportive of it, but he at least had an understanding of why it was passed and he felt good about being able to express his concerns i but think everybody should get a chance to do a q a <laughs> with charlie trump yeah <laughs> oh my but yeah but he's a treasure your specific question we do have funding and there is some talk uh so some we're trying to develop a structure of doing just that and that would be to working with the legislators if there is an issue that needs to be addressed in a bipartisan and more analytical manner we could provide the the platform the form and to do just that there will be more information coming yeah, about yeah, that yeah. Um, we we are in the research stages of that we're developing the research plan but we did receive a, a federal earmark from the u.s department of education to develop that facilitation method and we'll be working with our state legislators about that so is that almost lobbying to, to an extent no no or no, no, no just the opposite lobbying just the opposite. it would be uh and i'm getting ahead of it a little bit yes, so if i'm wrong <laughs> we, we, stop we, bill no 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 if you believe in this get on your chair <laughs> i'm getting on my chair it would be working with the legislature as their issue that they would like to see developed in a more thorough a more objective manner uh and would be working with them to do that we are the facilitators yeah, we are yeah. not the the lobbyists yeah. we would just be facilitating the conversation with multiple stakeholders and uh, ashley elaine first off thanks for coming in yeah, great to see you here me. i'm glad to be yeah. here and ashley for more information on the uh, stubblefield institute absolutely yeah. go to stubblefieldinstitute.org you can follow us on facebook and you can always give us a call at 304-876-5005 was it pretty cool working with Maria? Yes, <laughs> for 15 years. <laughs> A long time. A long time. <laughs>